volume of cylinders and Cavalieri's principal, we're at 11.2b. We have four previous videos for chapter 11 that are linked in the description in the geometry playlist and you might become lost or confused if you've missed them. The volume of a three-dimensional figure is the number of non-overlapping unit cubes of a given size, like one centimeter, one inch, one foot, etc., that'll exactly fill the interior of a three-dimensional object. We discussed this in the last video a little bit. Cavalieri's principle says if two 3D figures, like these two cylinders, have the same height and the same cross-sectional area at every level, they have the same volume. So here we have a right cylinder and we have an oblique cylinder. And if they have the same cross-sectional area at every level, both cylinders will have the same volume. These are cross sections of the cylinders and they would fit right in, see? These are the same area and they would fit both cylinders. Even though this one's oblique, they have the same volume. They're both eight centimeters high they have the same cross-sectional area at every level. So for your notes, for the volume of a cylinder, with base area B and radius R and height H is V equals B times H. Volume equals the base times the height. We can also do it as pi R squared H for height. And the pi R squared would be the base. And we'll talk about this more in a second. Cavalieri's principle relates to cylinders as it does to right and oblique prisms. In the last video, we used SAT cards, and one was stacked straight and the other one was stacked as an oblique. Whether we have a right cylinder or oblique cylinder, if they have the same height and same cross-sectional area at every level, they have the same volume. So here I have 25 DVDs. This one is stacked as a right cylinder. This one's stacked as an oblique cylinder. There's still 25 DVDs. All the DVDs are the same area at every level. Both stacks will have the same volume. And it doesn't matter if it's a right or oblique. They're the same. See? We can slant this one. It's still going to have the same volume. There's still 25 CDs that are the same size in the same area. That's Cavalieri's principle. We can find the volume of a cylinder and give our answer in terms of pi using an equal sign because the symbol pi represents all the digits of pi. Or we could give our answer rounded to the nearest tenth using an approximation sign, like this, because we rounded our answer. In some areas of the world, and even here in the United States, like the Big Island of Hawaii, cities don't supply water to the homes. They need to collect rainwater in tanks such as this one. Here's an ad for a steel rainwater tank, and in the ad we can see it's given the dimensions that the diameter is 288 inches and the height is 91 inches. And it shows how many gallons it holds, where it ships from. So the diameter of this tank is 288 inches and we know a radius is half the diameter. So the radius must be 144 inches. It tells us the height is 91 inches. We can use this formula. The volume is equal to pi times the radius squared times the height. And if you're interested in this topic, I'll have a link in the description about a home that actually uses this method of collecting rainwater to supply water to their house. Just check the description. So we know that the diameter of the base was 288, so the radius is half of that, it's 144. Using the formula, V equals pi r squared times height, we could do 144 times 144 
we get the 20,736. We multiply that by the height 91. And in terms of pi, that means we have pi in our answer, we get 1,886,976 pi inches cubed. It's cubed because we're doing a 3D figure object. We can put this pi symbol in the back because it doesn't matter what order we multiply. If we want to answer it rounded to the nearest tenth, we could take this amount and just hit the pi key on our calculators and we get this nice long 5,928,109. It wants it rounded to the nearest tenth, so this 3 is going to tell the 9 to stay the same. We just have a 0.9 inches cubed or cubic inches. We can even do the area of the circular base as pi r squared. The base itself would be 65,144 inches squared. See? A cylinder with a base area of 36 pi inches square and a height equal to twice the radius. We use the base area to find the radius. We know the base area is 36 pi. So that means we have pi r squared is equal to 36 pi, substituting that 36 pi for the base area. We divide both sides by pi to solve for the radius, r. This cancels out as a 1. That cancels out as a 1. We have r squared is equal to 36. We remove this 2 exponent by putting a radical sign around the 36, and we get that the radius is equal to 6 inches. So for this oblique cylinder, we know the radius is 6 inches. That's the first step. The second thing we do is use the radius to find the height. And it was given that the height is equal to twice the radius. So if we know the radius is 6 inches, 2 times 6 is 12 inches. The third thing we do is we use the radius and height to find the volume using the formula v equals pi r squared h to find the volume. We know our radius is 6, so that's going to be 6 squared. That's going to be 36. We know our height is now 12. We can do 36 times 12 and get 432 pi inches cubed if we solve it in terms of pi. If we have a scientific calculator, we can say it's approximately 432 times hitting that pi key we get 1,357, and that would be a 0.2. The 6 is telling the 1 to go up to a 2, right? Inches cubed. Remember to use the correct units. A three-dimensional object, like a cube, can be filled with unit cubes. So volume is measured in cubic units. Inches cubed, centimeters cubed, feet cubed, meters cubed, whatever. We have three dimensions, length, width, and height. That's why there's a three here. And the faces of a cube are squares that can be covered with unit squares. So the surface area is measured in square units. This is flat. It has two dimensions, length and width. So we have a little two exponent for two dimensions. Now we can talk about the effects of changing dimensions. Here we have a cylinder with original dimensions of 6 meters for the radius, from the center to the side at 6 meters, and it's got 12 meters for its height. If the radius and height are multiplied by half, we can describe the effect on the volume. So the volume as it is would be pi r squared h height, so that would be 36 times 12. This squared times 12 we have 432 pi meters cubed. If the radius and height are multiplied by half, the radius is a 6, so now we have a 3 for a radius. The height is a 12, so now we have a 6 for a height. And 3 squared is a 9 times 6 is 54. That means the volume is 54 pi meters cubed. By multiplying the radius and height by half, look what happened to the volume. We had our original volume and our volume after we multiplied the radius and height by half. If we multiply 1 eighth times 432 pi, we're going to get 54 pi, just like over here. 
It's the same thing as dividing 432 by 8, we get 54. So if the radius and height are multiplied by half, the volume is multiplied by half cubed, or 8. Half times half times half is 1 eighth. So if the radius and height are multiplied by half, the volume is multiplied by half cubed. And if the radius and height are multiplied by 2 thirds, the volume is multiplied by 2 thirds cubed, or 8 27ths. 2 thirds times 2 thirds times 2 thirds is 8 27ths. So do you see what's happening? We're multiplying the radius and height by 2 thirds. Volume is multiplied by 2 thirds cubed. If the radius and height are multiplied by 1 fourth, the volume is multiplied by 1 fourth cubed, or 1 64th because 1 fourth times 1 fourth times 1 fourth is equal to 1 64th. See the pattern there? So remember to divide a given diameter by 2 to get the radius, because a radius is half the diameter. And remember, the volume of any prism or cylinder is volume is equal to base times height, and the base is the length times width. Our next video is the last part of 11.2. We're going to talk about the volume of composite 3D figures. Then we're going to move on to 11.3, which is split into three parts of volume of pyramids, volume of cones, and cube roots. So remember, we can find the volume of a cylinder using the base area, B, radius R and height H, as V equals BH, the base times the height, or we could do pi r squared h. We could multiply the radius to the radius times the height times pi. Remember the Cavalieri's principle says whether we have a right cylinder or oblique cylinder, if they have the same height and same cross-sectional area at every level, they have the same volume. And remember that slant height is different than height and that we can put our answer in terms of pi or we can round it to the nearest tenth. I hope you're having a great day, and I hope I'll see you for the last part of this lesson in 11.2c. Bye.